So musculoskeletal ultrasound uh, has been around for a while now, for a number of years, but it's fairly new uh, tool for physical therapists. Uh, personally, I've been doing uh, MSK ultrasound for the past six, seven years now, and uh, we have been uh, implementing that in our facility. And uh, pretty much during my initial evaluation, I will, perform, uh, uh, I will perform the ultrasound just to get a better idea of what's going on with my patients. Um, I'm going to take you through uh, a, a brief uh, shoulder uh, application of MSK ultrasound and I'm going to show you what we're looking for uh, so when the patient comes in with, let's say, shoulder pain, you can pinpoint or, uh, or uh, rule out that there is no problem uh, with the shoulder and probably it's something else. And, uh, as we know, shoulder problem can be caused by a neck, it can be from the first rib, it can be from other parts of the body that can refer pain down to the shoulder. But it is an awesome tool for you as a physical therapist to be able to see inside the body and identify the problem. So again, uh, with, when we do scanning of joints, uh, we go through a specific protocol. Uh, when it comes to uh, a shoulder, we always start with a bicep standon, and when you do again ultrasound, you're going to have the view of in the short axis, in the long axis, so you can confirm uh, abnormality if there is any. So in this case, I have uh, Dimitrios uh, with me. Thank you, Dimitri, for being here with us. So I'm going to. Um, look for the bicep stand on a short axis and I'm going to occasionally freeze the screen so I can explain to you what I'm looking at. So right now looking at the screen I'm going to just freeze that image and I'm going to take you there and right here this is the bicep stand on right right here this is the bicipital groove okay and for orientation this is the lateral part of the screen i mean this is the lateral part of the body okay right here that's lateral this is medial again that's the bicipital groove right here and you go from uh, bottom top you go from bone and this is again the humerus then you have the bicipital of the um, bicep tendon and then of course you have muscle this is the deltoid and then you have fascia fat and skin that's how we orient ourselves looking at the gray scale on on that screen. So this is the bicep stand on again in a short axis and I'm going to go back now and I'm going to take a look at the um, same tendon but in the long axis now. And this is, I'm going to again take a nice image there and freeze it so you can have a better understanding of what I'm looking at. Awesome. And again this is bicep tendon sitting in the bicipital groove. This is the humerus. This is the tendon. Again, that's cephalad, that's caudat. That here, the bicep tendon going towards the joint. This is going down all the way to the, uh, to the elbow. This is the tendon. Again, we're looking for the quality of the tendon. We're looking to see whether it's fibrillar. We want to see that it's hyperachoic because anything uh, dark, uh, tendons are usually hyperachoic, bright. If you see them uh, dark, that means there is a pathology that you have to really look into that um, and, and examine why it's there. Here he might have some small area of fluid, this dark area right there. I don't consider that as a pathology, but you can see that the sith has a small distension there. Um, again, it, that's not, it's tiny, tiny, but you can see it's not, um, uh, it, it's not just a line. There is some degree of small fluid right there. But again, that's not the problem. Again, orienting yourself, cephalat, caudat, humerus, bone in other words, tendon, and then you go deltoid all the way up to fascia, fat, and skin. The next, uh, uh, the next uh, part here is the subscapularis. And again, this is the, the beauty with MSK ultrasound. It's dynamic. In other words, you can move uh, the body part and you can see how that tissue uh, behaves. Uh, something that MRI, for instance, as we know, it's static. You cannot move when you do an MRI. Uh, that's the beauty with MSK ultrasound. You can move, you can really see how the tissue um, uh, reacts and how the tissue behaves with motion. So for, this, for the uh, subscapularis, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go again first in short axis and I'm going to rotate the arm in external and external and internal rotation and I'm looking at the tendon. I'm going to freeze the image in a second. 
right here. Again, scanning the subsea polaris, it has to be an external rotation, which is, which is, uh, what, we, this is what you see right now. And you can see this awesome, very, very healthy subsea polaris tendon. And you can see how it goes and grabs the bone right here. That's the attachment. And this is the choroid process right here. I don't care about this part right now, but I'm looking at just purely, uh, I care about the, uh, the, the quality of the tendon. Again, this is a very healthy tendon. I don't see any problems right here. That's the subsea polaris in a short axis. And, uh, and I'm gonna go now to see the subsea polaris in a long axis. Again, I'm gonna externally rotate my humerus and I'm gonna get this image right there, right here. That's my subsea polaris in a long axis and you have those three circles in a way and this is where the tendon, the muscle becomes tendon. This is a very typical view of a, sub, of a healthy subscapularis. And I'm going to give you also the supraspinatus. And as we know, supraspinatus is the most important tendon of, of, of the shoulder because most of the injuries are happening on the supraspinatus level. So uh, I'm going to take you through that. There are two views, the short axis and the long axis. Uh, and um, I'll explain further how that looks on the screen. So uh, Dimi, I want you to take this hand and put it in your back pocket like that. There you go, thank you. Okay, so again, what we're looking here, we're looking at the, 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 the view that we call the tire on the rim. Um, let me get the image, and then I'm gonna give you a further explanation of what I'm looking at. So again, this is the supraspinatus tendon. This is the tire on the rim. Consider the supraspinatus as a tire and the rim is the, uh, is the humerus. And this is the dark space right there. We call that hyaline cartilage, okay? This is the hyaline cartilage, as you know, and that's how it's been represented. It's a very dark structure and it's supposed to be dark. It's anechoic. And then again, bone, tendon, muscle and the rest of the tissue. Um, the uh, sub um, deltoid subacrobial uh, bursa is something that most of the time you don't see. Uh, only if there is pathology, you're gonna see distended bursa right here. In his case, there's no pathology, but if you can pay attention here, there's a small line. This line is the subacromial bursa or the potential space where fluid goes if there is any uh, effusion in the joint or if there is any tear in the tendon and all that. So that's a short axis, and I'm going to uh, take you now to the long axis of the supraspinatus. So let's go back in the same position. Thank you. And this is my long axis, and we call that the bird's beak. Um, let me get a good image, so I'm going to give you a better understanding of what I'm looking at. And that's a very important view of the supraspinatus, because this is the we're gonna see the footprint. This is where the tendon gets attached. There you go. So I'm gonna bring this here. So this is the bird's beak, and this is where the fruit footprint is of the tendon. This is the attachment. And most of the injuries are happening on that area. Um, a typical view of an injury on the, of the supraspinatus, it will be an uneven uh, cortical uh, impression. Usually when there is a uh, lack of uh, fibrous visual visualization, uh, you're gonna see that reflecting on the bone, not being smooth anymore, but uh, you can see erosions on the bone, which means there is a tear. Of course, in his case, Demetrius' case, it's totally normal, it's clean. I can see the tendon being attached. Uh, as expected, because he's a young fella, although he's working out a lot, still he's too young to have problems. Uh, typically, you see issues in supraspinatus uh, in elderly than uh, at that age as Demetrius is. So that's basically it. And again, I think it's a very, very important um, tool for all of us as physical therapists to incorporate uh, in our um, process of examining uh, different parts of the body when you do your 
uh, initial evaluation, or not only during initial evaluation, but imagine be able to go back and compare, compare the first images that you did, let's say, or when you f first start, uh, you know, uh, seeing the patient, and then down the road after a few weeks, you're going to see if there's any changes in this um, in, of that problem. So yeah, that's all. I think uh, that is going to be the future of physical therapy. So get into it. Thank you.